the Toronto Harbour. The city is celebrating its 150th birthday and the Queen will be spending four days here. Waiting with the welcome bouquet was Sarah Eisen, just two years old and not at all sure about why she was freezing in her best dress on a cold morning and why, she demanded, couldn't she go on the big blue boat. The Queen disembarked and as the usual long line of VIPs was presented, the 13th official bouquet of the tour was still having a tantrum. But then, with great timing, got it right. It's 11 years since the Queen was in Toronto and the skyline's changed. Once a city with a reputation as quiet, not to say dull, it's transforming itself into a cosmopolitan centre. Those with British roots are still much in evidence. But in the last decade, Greeks, Ukrainians, Poles and Chileans have poured into the city, adding to the Italians and Portuguese. However, they have a police force whose band has traditions from north of the border. Finally, the BBC revealed details tonight of an extraordinary mass kidnap from Television Centre. It seems Bill and Ben, ben the Flowerpot Men were stolen a year ago, along with the wooden tops and another famous puppet, Spotty Dog. The BBC never revealed the kidnapping and paid £12,000 compensation to the puppet's owner. But this week, Bill and Ben were traced to a London auction room and were soon in protective custody at Shepherd's Bush Police Station. An investigative team from Blue Peter will reveal the whole story on Monday. And a comment on their experience from the victims. Quite. And that's the news on BBC One. Good night. Highlights of the Queen's visit to Canada can be seen on BBC One tomorrow afternoon, beginning at ten past five. And now the weather from Jim Bacon. Hello. Well, today's weather was the good news, and tomorrow's weather is the bad news, because instead of the sunshine that many areas saw today, it's cloud and rain that's pushed across the Atlantic towards us, and it'll be crossing the country during tomorrow. The isobars close together, so fairly windy weather arriving now, and these fronts carrying a band of cloud and rain, followed by blustery weather with some showers. Earlier on this evening, the satellite picture got a very good photograph of that. And there you can see it stretched out all to the west, which is where tomorrow's weather's coming from. The band of cloud along that front with one or two thicker patches, which is where we think there might perhaps be a small area of low pressure forming just to slow it down. But a lot of showers filling the Atlantic, ready to bring some pretty unsettled weather for the next two or three days at least. So by tomorrow morning, I think it'll just be that extreme eastern side of the country, which is still to see any rain, but it won't be all that far down the road. And I think by uh, the middle of the morning, uh, most parts of the country will have had some of the wet weather and it'll turn out to be pretty breezy as well. Western areas, Northern Ireland, Wales and the southwest of England, I think you'll find the weather brightening up fairly readily during the morning. And then some of these other central areas and northwestern parts of England will become brighter later, but there still could be some heavy showers. And that's it. Highlights of Sunday evening on BBC One at 7.15 China Rose, starring George C. Scott and Ali McGraw. <laughs> If you know him, tell him his father is here. I only want to help him. I, I'm at the Peninsula Hotel. I'll do anything I can. Is he alive? At 8.45, a feature-length Last of the Summer Wine. Lord, have mercy on this damn fool man being wheeled on a bicycle to an unwise assignation with no socks on. Oh, all right. Be like that, then. Omnibus at 10.35 follows the Thecla on her maiden voyage from Sunderland to Bristol with Viv Stanshall and a variety of other performers. You come most carefully upon your hour. What has this thing appeared again tonight? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Highlights of Sunday night on BBC One. BBC Two now continues the dramatisation of the life, work and ideas of the pioneer psychoanalyst Freud. Our late feature film on BBC One this evening is a mystery thriller, Cat and Nine Tales, and that's in 50 minutes following Match of the Day.
Good evening and welcome to Match of the Day and what a pleasure it is to be able to report on an excellent day's football and even more that our two matches tonight reflect the game in the very best light. They're all action, virtually non-stop, but in among the energy and effort of those involved there's no shortage of adventurous and skillful football and that's what you'd expect to find at St James Park, Newcastle. That was played beautifully by Waddle for Brown. McDonald is in the centre and McAllister just got his hands to it. Well, no disrespect to that thrilling game to be second on the bill, nor the goal of the month competition, but rather credit to the Cannon League second division match between Manchester City and Crystal Palace, where Steve Koppel, late of Manchester United in England, is now manager. A game that bubbled from start to finish. Your commentator is Barry Davis.